Good morning, this is week six, day five, 2024. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you are a God of order and not of chaos. You are a God who calls people to yourself. You are a God who establishes the way in which we can be reconciled to you, uh, the means by which we are able to approach you, not just in worship, but in forgiveness, ultimately on account of Christ. And we thank you for the foreshadowing, the, the pictures, the way that you pointed forward uh, to that truth throughout the Old Testament and brought it to fulfillment in the new. And we pray that as we spend time this morning reflecting on your word, that by the work of your Holy Spirit, you would speak and minister to our hearts and our minds. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. This is Philippians chapter 2, which begins with this nice little word, so. Anytime you find these sort of connecting words, uh, so, because, on account of this, therefore, uh, the clever way to remember it is anytime you see the word therefore, ask, what's it there for? The same thing happens when you have this connecting word, so. This is building upon everything that Paul has already laid out in Philippians chapter 1. <clears throat> you are suffering in the same conflict. You are fellow workers alongside of me. So if there is any encouragement that has come to you on account of being in Christ... If there is any comfort from the love that you have experienced from God the Father, any participation that you have in the work of the Holy Spirit, affection or sympathy, complete my, Paul's joy, by having unity. The same mind, same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Now, if we were just reading this from a perspective of, of getting at what was Paul saying to the church in Philippi, you would probably come to the conclusion that there is some kind of disunity within the church. Paul is admonishing them, he's encouraging them to be united, probably because this is something they're struggling with. It's a good reminder for us that there is no such thing as a perfect church. All churches have their struggles because all churches are composed of sinners, and all sinners will at one time or another sin against one another. And so even here, as you have this particular church that, that Paul obviously cares very much about, there are still issues here. And getting at the heart of how to fix it, how to solve the problem, is to address the underlying heart issues. What has led to this disunity, for instance, in Philippi? We may not know the, the nuances and the ins and the outs of words that were spoken or the precise conflicts that were taken, but... We do know, and we can talk about this from our own experience, that conflicts often arise out of selfishness. We're not getting what we want in the moment. And the other party is not getting what they want in the moment. Which is why he says here, do nothing from selfish, selfish ambition or conceit, pride, of thinking well of yourselves and so forth, thinking that your needs matter than any more so than anybody else's needs. <clears throat> the heart that is beneath the outward action that's resulting in disunity is, is this. 
that self-centeredness with which we all struggle. And so the encouragement he gives in verse 4 is don't just look out for your own interests. you, you got to fix this self-centered focus. And you have to look to the interests of others too, and not just your own. Because that is what our Savior did for us. And Paul moves into this beautiful text, uh, 5 through 11, talking about the, the depth of the humility of Christ and what he did and what he went through because he was looking out for our needs, not just his own. And verse 12 Therefore, we have another connecting word here. Christ has done this. You are not supposed to be self-centered in your lifestyle. So, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Remember in chapter 1, we had an emphasis on he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, an emphasis on the work of God. Here, there's an emphasis on us. We must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. There is activity on our part. There are choices we make. There are disciplines with which we engage. It is God who works in you. This both and concept here, verse 12 and 13. I would encourage you to take some time uh, to dig into the tail end of chapter 2 in your reflections today, recognizing that the words are easy to understand, hard to put into practice. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Be glad and rejoice in all circumstances and encourage, recognize, and lift up those who do this very work. Timothy, who's proven his worth in how he cares about the Philippians. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. You know, it's really easy to pay people lip service. We often talk about the fact that the question, how are you doing, just becomes another form of a greeting, like, hello. And the polite response, how are you doing, is to just simply say, good, fine, okay, getting along, without ever truly caring about someone's well-being. We also don't want to open up and inform somebody about what's really going on in our lives. And yet, as the people of God, we should genuinely be concerned for one another's welfare, for the interests of each other and not just ourselves. And so we should not, on the one hand, ask the question, how are you doing, without really wanting to know how someone is doing. And likewise, we should be willing to open up to each other, to admit when we are struggling, where we could need help, how we might need some support. And that openness can be difficult. I'm sure we've all had experiences where we've been burned by somebody or we thought we could trust someone and it turns out we couldn't. And so this is not something that necessarily comes easy to us. But if we are to be imitators of Christ, and if we are to abide in the Word of God, then we ought to be looking out for one another in ways that really matter. So I'll leave you with that to kind of ponder more today, and let me pray. God, we do ask 
that you would help to humble us, that help to transform us from the inside out, that we would think about what it means to genuinely care about one another, what it means to think about the well-being of other people within the church, and how we can grow in an openness with one another and in a ministry to one another. And would you help us uh, to continue that work as we seek to work out our salvation with fear and trembling? Amen.